Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade, and this is How to App on iOS. And hello, this is Patrick from the Garage Band Gade. That's right, folks. There it is. <laughs> I can see him shaking his head. <laughs> you can't. Man, we finally have him on the show, Patrick Baird, and we're going to be talking all good things about music, YouTube, GarageBand, everything like that. Let's get straight into it with a little bit of Muzak. Yeah, this is Patrick Baird and his amazing musical act, which now you're all about to find out about, called Wiredrawn. How do you do? What's going on, everybody? Good to see you all. Welcome to the show. And um, it is a great day. Let me tell you that. Um, uh, we are not streaming out to Facebook today because I don't know why. Restream decided not to do it. So... Welcome to YouTube, everybody. If you want to uh, watch along on our website, you can go to uh, howtoapponiOS.com and watch along there. Or you can come over here to the YouTubes and watch us here. And let's say a quick hello to everybody. I'll be as quick as I can to get through all this stuff. Let's see who's here today. We've got Gary Hobbs. We've got Ed B. We've got Deep Gravity. we got, uh, who else is here? Jessica Jan is here. Scott's here. Rocking away. Uh, SM Borthwick is here as well. Tom Rochelle. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Pete Johns is here. What are you doing here, Pete? You should be uh, working. <laughs> Synth Widow, hello. How do you do? Russ is here paying to get in these doctor's orders. And also, who 
else is here? God, I'm losing the plottery. Joey Helpish is here as well. Benedict Stewart running through all these names as far as I can. I feel like I'm in a race. Race. Uh, Cold Acres here. Who's going to ban everybody out of his pocket? Maury's here. Dean Thomas is here. All the crew is here. It looks like as I scroll towards the bottom. For Andy Goldsby is here too. Rock Hard Music. Hello to you. Yes, I'm looking up to the side because I'm trying to get through everybody's name. I think that's most people. Lady Rodeline Strait is here as well. Kirsten, hello. Good to see you all. We have a really cool show for you today. We have the legendary, the one and only, your friend and mine, if you definitely are a garage band user, uh, the man behind that fantastic music there, who many of you might not have heard of before, but we'll hear a little bit more about that and a bit more music as we go on. Yes, from the Garage Band Guide, the one, the only, Patrick Baird is with us today. Hello, Patrick. How are you going, my friend? What have I signed up for? <laughs> <laughs> Fun. I am joking. I'm great, Jade. How are you? I'm really good. Really good. Glad to have you on the show. <laughs> Finally. Finally. I've been waiting for my invitation for so long as well. Yeah, I know. I was, I was saving the best. <laughs> saving the best till, you know, later on. Yeah, I had to establish myself first. <laughs> have enough people watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good times. Good times. So, so that's your band, yeah? Well, it's just me. Not really a band, it's just me. Oh. Yeah, that that was from my 2011, a long time ago, EP, Loose Lips Sink Ships. Yeah. I'm, I didn't say the title of the song, so thank you for that. I'm such a shit host. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. It's all good. It's all good. Well, seeing as though we're, we're going to jump straight in and talk about music, and what does music mean to Patrick Baird? <laughs> oh, everything i think like everybody watching i think it's just that's a massive part of my life um not only was i content with making music and thinking about my own music <laughs> all the time i decided to get involved in other people's music as well and help them to kind of create their own projects and things like that so yeah i'd say probably pretty much everything, everything. is that dramatic enough for you <laughs> no it's perfect <laughs> it's perfect um you know i i totally agree music is everything Without it, I feel like sometimes I wouldn't even exist. Um, yeah, because sometimes in the darkest, deepest depths of despair and happiness and joy, if it wasn't for music, I probably wouldn't even be here myself. Cheery, keep it light. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said <laughs> happiness and despair. Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. Okay. I balance. Try to give it a bit of balance. <laughs> Um, do you remember the music uh, that was played in your household as a child? And did it, oh, yeah, did it scar you? No, no, actually. my pair, Well, my dad has or did have quite a good taste in music. I don't know what his taste in music is now, to be fair. Um, he was big into things like Queen, um, Pink Floyd, um, 10cc, things like that. Um, I distinctly remember all that kind of stuff growing up and in the car, going places, that's what would be on. It would either be that or it would be... Elton John, but not good Elton John. My mother was into Elton John in like the early nineties. Like, yeah, right. it was bad. Um, and things like Simply Red and yeah, stuff. Man. So really crap, dreadful early nineties British pop stars. Um, kind of melded with kind of amazing rock bands and stuff. So yeah, quite a quite an eclectic mix of music that I was exposed to at a young age. Yeah. So, do you remember the first album that uh, you either purchased or was given? <laughs> was given. So, yeah. and what format was it on? Um, the first album I remember owning was a cassette tape of. Now, in the UK, we had a show called Gladiators, which was oh, um, um, there's like an American version of it as well. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably an Aussie there's version an Aussie of it as well. And and it'd come out to like old kind of 70s rock songs and different songs would be like the entry music. So my first kind of proper album when I was like, I don't even know, six, seven maybe, was this Gladiators cassette tape <laughs> that I think I wore out dancing in my, dancing around my bedroom listening to crap versions of 70s <laughs> prog. Um, but yeah, the first, I think the first CD that I bought, um, I think I was about 13 maybe that I bought with my own money, a CD single. Can you remember those? 
Yeah. And this is really, I bought two at once. The first one, this is really embarrassing. The first one was uh, a, a very obscure band now called Babylon Zoo. And the song was Spaceman. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, it was like so... on like a Levi advert or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the second, the second CD single I ever bought was How Bizarre by OMC. Oh, wow. Do you know that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I think we grew up around the same kind of era, so. <laughs> yeah, dreadful, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there were some good times. There were some bad times musically. <laughs> So yeah, pretty yeah, uh, pretty dreadful kind of first foray into buying my own music. Yeah, <laughs> Gladiator. I always like I'm a big <laughs> wrestling fan, right? I, I, I haven't grown up. I don't care. Like, come at me. It's like Home and Away with punching to me. <laughs> <laughs> if only Home and Away did have punching, it would be watchable. <laughs> oh my God, what an idea! <laughs> yeah, see an Elf Stewart bash everybody. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> So, uh, Gladiators, to me, was like wrestlers who couldn't make it in the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Very much so, yeah. Wolf being the obvious, uh, or obvious, obvious exception to that, if you're familiar with Wolf what? from Gladiators at all. Uh, see, we all, ours had different names. Like, the US ones had different names, too. Like, I can't, mm, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all stupid. They're all, like like bad mortal combat names <laughs> you expect to see someone dressed like sub-zero what the hell oh home and away mortal combat <laughs> or you could do like mortal combat home and away versus neighbors yeah. oh my god you need to call someone Jay. harold bishop <laughs> and bouncer versus uh versus elf stewart where the bloody hell are you <laughs> now bouncer down bouncer Oh dear! Nice with a last third stage fatality. That's a great idea. <laughs> People in America right now are going who? What? What are they talking about? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> We're like yeah, talking totally. in Turkish right now to them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So, uh, did you get forced to play an instrument when you were a kid? Uh, I didn't get forced. Did I get forced? I don't know. I started playing the violin when I was seven. Um, I hated it. <laughs> But I tortured, I tortured my parents with it for, I think, like six years until I was 13. Does that math work? I guess so. Um, yeah. So kind of from seven onwards, absolutely hated it. Didn't practice enough to get good, but didn't quite hate it enough to give up. So it was just like perpetual agony from my parents. Um, <laughs> Did they buy it for you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they bought me. Yeah, yeah, they've come to the, the the concerts and stuff and pretend. Oh, well done. Yeah, I bet they absolutely hated it. Found out years later that my dad, in particular, was the happiest man he's ever been when I said, "Look, you know, I um, I think I want to give this up." <laughs> so, Amazing. So, wh wh where did you go from the violin? A uh, guitar at age thirteen. Um, I'm old enough that when I was that age, that was when. Um, Oasis were massive, Blur were massive, so that kind of yeah. like 94, 5, 6 kind of time, um, yeah, around that kind of time anyway. So it was a great time to kind of pick up and learn, learn the guitar. And kind of with Oasis being so big, it was really easy to learn to play their songs because certainly like their earlier stuff isn't particularly difficult to play on the acoustic guitar. So it was quite a good time to kind of be semi-proficient at the car, at the guitar and look really cool doing it because you're playing an Oasis song. Um, yeah. So, yeah, guitar at 13 and then was forced into a... I say forced, into like a high school, or a middle school it was, but I guess high school band where we play dreadful covers at like school assemblies and at hey, like man. local events and stuff. I would, I would... No, no, man, it wasn't cool. It was dreadful. I mean, <laughs> it was I dreadful. would give my life to go back to my school band. Really? Yeah. Oh, look, we we were really lucky. Okay. Here. We, we were really lucky here in Victoria, where I live. Our our school system went through this overhaul, and they renamed the whole system Victorian College of Education. And our right. school was one of the first schools to do this test run, and they had a music course in Year Twelve, where they they took in all these students, if just for the music course. All you had to do mandatory was um, English, social studies, maths and science but the pretty much 90 percent of your time was doing music and they split all the students into three bands each three each band had to learn 50 covers in two months and then you did the lunch times for the first few months and then the last like four months of the year 
we were out playing other schools, so girls' high schools, and we were coming out on stage at other schools with wow. kids going, ah! And then we went on <laughs> tour with um, Midnight Oil, um, and we did all these country right. shows playing on the back of a truck, and it cost $500 for the whole year. Man, it was, it wow. was like heaven. I didn't want to leave school. <laughs> yeah. I wish, uh, yeah, that sounds great. It sounds a lot better than what I did frantically practicing in the music room at lunch lunchtime <laughs> <laughs> i was very privileged so uh, but um yeah absolutely that sounds amazing yeah I, I think they still do it i don't think it's as generous now as back then what was your um what was your favorite song to play from back then that you got to play live what was your favorite one um well we did lots of varied stuff we did uh, so we had motley crew we had like nick kershaw All right. Faith No More to, you know, oh Black God. Velvet. Oh, man, we, had, we were called The Lost Seaman. Right. Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, probably my favorite song to play was uh, either uh, I Got You, <laughs> I Feel right. Good, or Faith No More song. So, yeah. But even after that, I think we, our band won, the, we won like the state um, school band of the year. And after that, we got to play gigs in like um, nightclubs and. We kind of went on after year 12. It was, man. Like, what kind of age were you? What kind of age was that? 18. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, before then, I, music classes, music at, at Australian schools was pretty lame. It was just the recorder, and then that's it. <laughs> it wasn't really very in-depth. <laughs> so, yeah. what, what, no, what bands actually influence your music? Or influence you? Um... <laughs> Quite a, quite a wide variety. I've, I've got quite a eclectic taste in music nowadays. I think back, so looking back at like recording that EP, it was stuff like um, it was kind of like the, I'm trying to think of what like Get Up Kids kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. A lot of kind of alternative stuff, um, Idiot Pilot, that kind of thing. Um, that kind of alternative scene from kind of the the mid to late two thousands, including the lame stuff. Um, yeah, so I mean, I would have loved to. I mean, I was into that kind of time and a bit earlier. I was into quite a lot of metal and stuff, but I would have no idea how to like properly like perform a metal track. Like I can't scream or anything like that. I can kind of know how to sing, but I can't really kind of do anything a bit, you know, more hardcore than that. Um, so although I was kind of listening to stuff that was a lot harder, I didn't really wasn't able to record anything that was kind of particularly hardcore, if you know what I mean. Um, I think kind of. Big influences for me is a lot of stuff, a lot of grunge stuff from the 90s. So I'm I kind of, I was a bit late to the party with all that kind of stuff. My first kind of introduction to grunge was like Nirvana, never mind. I was never really kind of like a, didn't come to it particularly early or anything, but yeah, and then devoured stuff like Soundgarden and Alice in Chains and all that kind of stuff as well. So there's certainly a lot of that kind of grunge sensibility that goes through a lot of my music as well, that kind of like, quite ugliness kind of interspersed with big choruses really and then quiet bits and loud bits really so, uh, not really much more technical than that to be I, honest it's just i found it yeah. quite interesting when i when i you know found your music which um I, you know and i i searched and the way i found it was through um your website there's this tiny little link in your bio that just says here's my music here it's so small. Like, so, because uh, uh, of the because of your your shows and what you do, you know, on on um, the Garage Band Guide, mm -hmm. I, I don't really, you know, I've never really, and I've followed you for the longest time. I mean, you're you're somebody who's inspired me to start up my channel and and to you know someone who has come to for help when I needed help when I was studying at the Garage awesome. Band. Um, so I, I never really got the sense of what type of music you played through your shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's bits and pieces kind of interspersed through tutorials and things like that. I'll have projects that I've been working on, half-finished projects, as my hard drive is full of half-finished projects and stuff. Yeah. But never really... And it's a funny one. I'm not really a particularly kind of extroverted person, really. I know that sounds ridiculous coming from somebody who puts their face on YouTube. I know that sounds so stupid. But in terms of, like my music i never really wanted to use the garage band guide as a platform to say hey here's my music yeah. here i'll teach you how to do this thing and by the way listen to my stuff because i just it kind of seems a bit like mm. to me anyway certainly it seemed a little bit 
you know, that's not really the purpose of it. It's not for me to, I've got a massive head here. Oh, what's happening? Uh, Hello? This, this happens every now and again. OBS just decides right. to go, you know what? I'm just... Well, I get a massive head. I'm just going to make I'm talking about being really introverted big. and you're giving me a massive head. I, I bet it's done it to all the cameras now. <laughs> yeah, look, it's done it to all of them. It, mm. it just it just decides of its own accord, I'm just going to mess with it. <laughs> just what happens when they get someone of my calibre on your show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So his, his head's not big enough. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it bigger. Thank you. So not enough room for my ego on Skype. Um, yeah. So yeah, I kind of want to keep the two separate, really. To be honest, um, you made a very good point at the start of the show when you said that you find it hard to trust people who are giving advice and giving tutorials when they're not willing to share their own music, which is actually a really good point. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Does that mean you don't trust me? <laughs> no. no luckily enough you, luckily enough you give good advice <laughs> and, right. and yeah, like true. you know th I'll, I'll be honest so you know uh, clearly uh, from watching your channel for a long time and you showing like you know an app or something like that and then you open it up clearly i, I think i i'm smart enough and i think many people are to see that oh this must be music that you're working on as well like that you're showing it's there's never anything that you've played that sound, looks like someone else's music or anything yeah. like that so you know th where there are many channels out there who yeah just have like especially like, pro like people say they're a producer or something and it's like th there must be you, you must have some example of what you're producing yeah. like you know <laughs> at least something <laughs> it's not always the case I don't know. But you make a good point. You make a good point, absolutely. And I, I said as well that when we chatted just before the show, one of my kind of New Year resolutions, not that I really believe in them, is because in 2020, I spent a lot of time showing people how to make music and then didn't actually really make a lot of music myself and certainly didn't release any music at all in 2020, um, apart from, I think, one or two projects that were for videos. Um, so, yeah, I kind of promised myself that I'm actually going to, like, record, mix release something this year whether it's a single or an ep or if i suddenly have an abundance of free time somehow I don't know. um yeah. an album it's definitely going to be something anyway pete jones will be sitting there very happily right now going create record release <laughs> <laughs> i wish i had pete john's work ethic my god the man yeah. is a machine <laughs> no shit <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he plugs into batteries at night oh absolutely going. yeah <laughs> Not you heard, it, you heard it here first, folks. Pete John <laughs> is an android. Bow down to your robot overlord. <laughs> I'll say hello to a few other people who come in the chat here, I think. Um, I saw Metalhead Hippie. Hello, Guzzo of Oz. Who else did I see? I think I saw Jessica Jans. Bubba came in as well. So welcome to you guys. Stu Cash has popped in too. Um, I don't think I've missed anyone else trying to look at the same time as everything else so welcome everybody rick lisk is here g'day rick how are you good to see you hey, Rick. and um so have you played in a band yeah 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 absolutely so well my amazing high school band after that as well did your high school band have a name so the middle school one had a, a name uh oh god um <laughs> so yeah when we were like 13 it was called <laughs> mad ferret no, nice. it's pathetic. It's a no, pathetic like take on like Britpop. Mad for it, yeah. Deeply, deeply sad individuals. Um, and then in high school, I had another band. I was in a band, sorry, um, called Esme, where um, we had a guitarist who was slightly older, and it was all our own stuff, or set. Well, certainly more his stuff that we played. Um, but it was all kind of original material. Um, and that was a really good experience because you get the kind of the impact of playing shows, and then after you've kind of played quite a lot of them in different areas, people get to know you and you're playing a show and people are singing your songs back at you, <laughs> which is like an incredible experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, a bit like grotty little pubs and sports centres and stuff. It was never kind of anything massive. Um, and then after that, um, a lot of the, the members from that group, as we got older, went off, um, formed a different band, um, had a little bit of success um, called One Mississippi, W O N M I S S I S S I P P I. I've said that enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, the, uh, 
they went on to release a couple of, like two albums. The second album got quite a lot of airplay in the UK. Certainly they got to two places kind of around England and Scotland and stuff. And then their singer left because he had a kid. Obviously life happens sometimes. Um, and then they came to me to join them to record the third album and kind of do a bit of touring with them as well. Again, just around the kind of north, middle of England and then kind of a bit of Scotland as well. So that was that was great fun as well. Yeah, being in a in a band with mates traveling around playing shows to mostly empty <laughs> empty venues to be fair but uh, certainly like really good um experience if nothing else but that was kind of the last kind of band that i've been in um after that um i'd kind of moved away my girlfriend and now my wife we moved away up to the north of scotland so it became kind of like a a solo gig after that for me yep Every time I, I, I think of, um, you know, uh, if you've played in a band, we've all done that. We've all played to virtually nobody. And yeah, yeah. It, it always reminds me of um, the, the comic strip series for when the Bad News episode. Have you seen that? The guys from, no, no. The, the, guys from the Young Ones? So they've got this metal. Oh, this, possibly. Yeah, they've got this metal possibly. band called Bad News and they, they play this gig at the end and there's nobody there. And the whole build up of the show is to get to this gig. And there's nobody there, and at the end, the the the, uh, the 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 owner of the venue goes, "Well, there's no money, sorry." And uh, Nigel Planner, who plays a bass player, goes, "You didn't let the dog in for free, did you?" <laughs> Just, <laughs> that reminds me of nearly every gig I played when I was a kid, <laughs> getting told, "There's no money, sorry." Oh yeah, no, we never made money. It was never, it was never really about making money. Um, I think with a lot of these things when it becomes about making money and money becomes your primary focus things can get a little bit kind of distorted shall we say um yeah do you have any dodgy stories about playing venues with <laughs> not really like i mean not really anything that's massively interesting there was never really enough people at our gigs for it to be <laughs> for it to be dodgy like no brawls like the three people there creating a mosh pit or something no no it was never really kind of um Never had any terrible experiences, really, to be honest. And once, go on. What, we, uh, you got one that's that's no, dreadful. Oh no, we, there's this venue here in Melbourne that I'm not going to say the name, but like, mm. he would give guarantees. Why not? Come on. He would give. Oh well, they they closed down now. The Richmond Club. Anyway, they would give guarantees of like a hundred dollars, and then when you finish playing, then no one turned up. The guy would try and give you acid trips as payment. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was fine. Like a hundred dollars worth of acid trips, or just? Well, I was. It was more. You could like, get more money um, out of the acid trips. It was just, you know, you had to deal with great being deal. a criminal to actually try and make money. <laughs> so, come play at our venue. Good I'll details. turn you into a criminal. <laughs> He's in jail now. I think. So. It's, all, it's all good. good. <laughs> I didn't dob him in. <laughs> Not was me. Um, so um, just going back a bit because uh, I kind of skimmed over it but talking about instruments so you're a really amazing singer as well uh oh, thank you have you had vocal lessons or anything like that no nah, not at all not at all do i sound like a lucky bitch no <laughs> <laughs> no nah, nah, not at all not at all um <laughs> kind of thought about it because kind of thought about it because i think i do have quite a good voice i think i've probably got potential to have a better voice if i was to actually kind of um, focus and actually work on developing it with exercises and st stuff like that, and maybe going to some vocal coaching and things. But I've never, I've never done it. No. Yeah. No, Classic no. procrastinator. Well, you know, I, I I taught vocals for a long time, and you know, I don't. Yes. I don't think. Um, you know, uh, I think everybody can sing, even people mm. who you hear and just go. Ee! And I think the problem with the people that you hear and go ee! is that they're surrounded by people who don't tell them they sound shit mm. that's a really big problem i think for a lot yeah. of people who sing and then you know with the advent of reality shows mm. where these people get on instead of constructive criticism going hey go away and get some lessons they just take the piss out of them make them yeah. a meme but that kind of culture has kind of leaked through to the real world i think um where people get friends around molly coddle people and go mm, yeah oh yeah you yeah. sound great and then they don't actually support the people because they're all behind their back going you can't fucking sing 
this is it instead of maybe giving them some actual constructive criticism they're yeah. all kind of yeah absolutely yes men and to their faces and then taking the piss behind their back yeah but there's I, a lot of that around you can tell i, I don't think people uh, i would never say anybody actually needs singing lessons um because uh, look at Kurt Cobain look at so many artists that you know, I listen to Bob Dylan, and personally, I'm not really a Bob Dylan fan. Hey, 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 I think of Bart Simpson swinging around on the pole, going, "Hey, hey, 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 hey!" I'm sure I've offended. He sold all everybody. his rights. Did you see that? He sold all the rights to his back catalogue for three hundred million dollars. Yeah, wow, it's crazy. Loads of million. people. Mick Fleetwood did it yesterday or today, I think, again as well. That's I think a people lot. Are, they, are these guys skint? What is going on? <laughs> That's. A- that's a lot of money too, man. Three hundred yeah. million dollars. Like you could not actually. Well, you could give it a good go, but yeah. you could not. I, I couldn't imagine spending that amount of money. No. Surely, like oh. Imagine how much is going to charity as well. Well, you got to keep yeah. the keep the charity machine rolling and keep the tax man off your back and all that jazz. Yeah. True. True. Uh, I saw some other people come in the, into the chat as well. I want to make sure I say hello. Kim is here as well. I think I saw Danny Broderick and uh, Brad as well. I think I saw Pop in. So welcome to you guys. Thomas Galane as well. Thomas has got a great new single out, which is really cool. Um, so obviously, well, not obviously. Uh, this is what I'm here to ask you. You've spent time recording in actual, in quotes, real recording studios, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would call it a real recording studio. It wasn't anything particularly flashy, but it was um, a studio with a mixing desk and a man who worked a mixing desk and vocal rooms and drum rooms and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, did, do you think that your time recording in there, has it, was that advantageous for, you know, your your now future as, you know, doing garage band and stuff on YouTube? Has ha, What did you take away from, really. it, from that? Not really, to be honest. I mean, that's such a bigger scale than what I work with now and what I've ever worked with. And that's kind of going back to 2008, 2009, obviously. That's kind of was the, in terms of the way technology moves on, that's like a lifetime ago. So, I mean, and kind of knowing about takes and, and what order to record stuff and when to do guide tracks and overdubs and all that kind of stuff, then, yeah, like a, like a basic kind of framework of how to actually approach a project and putting it together maybe but in terms of the actual technical stuff of plugging stuff in and recording it recording levels and actually mixing no not at all not at all far too big a scale compared to what i use now yeah what's interesting about recording studios somebody wrote here in the chat uh, deep gravity wrote most recording studios i've seen are pretty grotty <laughs> back in it was day, a grotty recording studio yeah yeah it wasn't a flashy one at all back in the day that was even the kind of flashy ones were still pretty grotty they were like um you know a, a tiny step up from a rehearsal room <laughs> i think the best ones probably still are because you're going to get a lot of character put on at your record as opposed to some just something that's been polished polished to a mirror shine which is just yeah. i don't think anybody's interested in that really are they well, that's it, folks. So you've heard it uh, from the horse's mouth. If you're going to go into a, a quote, real <laughs> recording studio, make sure your feet stick to the carpet. All right. <laughs> and you can't Absolutely. Go, you can't go wrong. I did, um, I, I did two years at a music college in 2007, 2008. Um, and yeah, like, don't waste the time. <laughs> really? I mean, obviously, it was like a, a music performance um course so you, the, the different things were about kind of music business how to conduct yourself in music business there was uh like performance there was a, how you write your track and then you and other members of the course get together form a band and perform it and then there was like an engineer side of it where you would go into like the, the college's recording studio and use all their gear to to kind of record stuff as well but back then it was all cubase they were using and stuff and i've never i'm sure cubase is probably more user friendly now but back then it was just an absolute conundrum for someone like me who hadn't really had any experience beyond like what was that game on PlayStation that was like a doll? Music Music, music 2000. 2000? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of experience in that. It was MTV Music in the US. Yes, that's the For one. Some yeah, yeah. Reason. Yeah. Oh man, I could make some bangers on Music 2000 on the PlayStation. And um, but when it came to actual proper recording software of that time, it was just I had no idea what I was doing. Completely unintuitive. 
Um, and a lot of that experience really kind of coloured the approach when it came to kind of creating the garage band guide as well. Yeah, look, I, I still use Music 2000. Um, hmm. I, I tried to re yeah. reinstall it on Windows 10. Can't do it. But the workaround yeah. is to just get a PlayStation emulator. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. And get the ROM and do it that way. Because there were two versions. There was, there was a version on PlayStation 2 and there was a version mm -hmm. on PlayStation yeah, yeah. 1. Um, yep. I, I, I think I had all of them. I think I had the PC version as well. Man, a lot of my music from my other band, Utensils, was made using the uh, Music 2000. Oh, yeah? Happy days, man. I, lo it's I amazing. love that app. Yeah, yeah. So good. So Just good. Just Because it was easy to use. With a, with a PlayStation controller. <laughs> you know what it felt like? <laughs> it felt like um, now how we have iOS devices and people now who poo-poo at you going, nah, I'm making music on iOS. <laughs> Back then, making music on a PlayStation, the same. it was like the same yeah. people but younger were going, nah, you can't make music on a PlayStation. <laughs> Fuck off. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Thinking about it before that even, um, I had a Super Nintendo when I was about... This is just coming back to me now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you should charge for this. This is therapy. Um, <laughs> and I, I had a game called Mario Paint. Cut yeah, like a man. little mouse with it. And yeah. you could... you can still, On YouTube, people still create stuff with it now. But there was, there was like a little... Almost like a little MIDI editor that you could add little Super Mario sounds onto and create music that way. And I was great with that as well. Wow. There you go. Commodore 64. Uh, now... I had, a, I had a Spectrum. I didn't have a Commodore. I was a Spectrum guy. Oh, my God. A Specky. A Specky. A Specky <laughs> Specky, yeah. I couldn't get into Speckies because <laughs> they went colour. That was my main problem. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like, nah. I mean, they're virtually the same kind of games, you know. So I just have to put the cassette in and yeah. press play and wait for... Yeah, exactly. 30 minutes for your one level of your game to load. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> I should do this again. So this is a cassette. <laughs> you used to be able to have not only music on these, but video games. <laughs> and and it blows my mind. Piracy back then for video games was a, a double tape recorder, <laughs> and you could stick in your yeah. video game in one side and a blank cassette in the other, and <laughs> put it onto the <laughs> tape. It never uh, used to cost anything. About four pounds, I remember games used to cost as well. Imagine that, four pounds yeah. for a new game. Anyway, Did, sorry. Didn't you guys used to get games from a, a place called um, um, Memory Boots? I don't even know what that is. is that Boots? A, is no, that Boots store? is like a pharmacy. It's like a chemist. I thought they used to Woolworths is where we used to get them from. But it's a different Woolworths from your with Woolworths, I think. It's not Woolies. the same Woolworths. Yeah. It's not yeah. around in the UK anymore. We call it Woolies, mate, in Australia. <laughs> of course, we, we put it. An yeah, ease on everything. something is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Doug from the Sound Test Room is here too, and he's kindly given oh. a super chat. Thank you very much, Doug. Welcome aboard. Dude. He's coming on the show soon. He's going to get tortured. I know. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It's very exciting. He's going to get tortured. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get tortured. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's looking at Joe right now going what have you got me into <laughs> um, so um, moving from recording studios to GarageBand what was your mm -hmm. first experience with GarageBand uh, my uh, then girlfriend no wife had a really old iBook G4 so this is the one like before the white plastic MacBook. It's like it was a, a bigger, fatter, whiter plastic MacBook kind of thing before that. Um, that she had, and we were together for like a year and a half before she mentioned one day, oh yeah, I have a, a program on my computer you can use if you want. You can record music and play with the music and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that sounds quite interesting. Opened it up and was like, oh my God, <laughs> you've had a full recording studio in your computer for the last year and a half that we've been together. Um, so of course we moved in together shortly after um, <laughs> <laughs> love of course um, <laughs> I love you baby for your Mac for your Mac <laughs> for your, your iBook um, oh, oh no, my god I was only going to say no I'm not going to go down that path <laughs> she's, she's watching this she's going to come through this door kick through the door um, <laughs> yeah and kind of so it was like Garage Band 1 so it was like the very first version on the Mac um, great program, absolutely fantastic. Um, 
And yeah, loved it. Started recording just using the onboard mic on the iBook G4. There was no equipment at all. It was just the computer and me with an acoustic guitar recording the acoustic guitar. I don't, I'm doing this, by the way. You can't see me. <laughs> um, playing the acoustic guitar into the microphone of the computer and then like adding distortion and amp effects onto the acoustic guitar. Yeah. sounded shit but <laughs> it was really really good experience um in terms of like building a track and putting all your elements together and then using stuff like eq I had no idea how to use eq at all as i say everything sounded dreadful um you? but it was really good experience it was absolutely fantastic um and then i got a usb microphone i still have it samson c01u um and then obviously that was like a massive step up in terms of sound quality um, and things actually started to sound quite good. And I was kind of like, oh, yeah, right, wow. <laughs> actually, this I could actually make some decent music. Because we didn't, um, I think for like the first year, we didn't have internet in our flat. So it was, wasn't kind of like on forums or on websites, like seeing what people were saying or that there was anybody showing you how to use this thing. It was completely just kind of finding my own way and playing the things until things start to sound good, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So it was quite an interesting, it was quite good for me, I think, to kind of learn a lot of that stuff just completely through doing it, as opposed to being told how to do it, which conversely is what I do now is tell people <laughs> how to do it. It's, yeah. <laughs> do as I say, as I say, mm. that's how it works. Um, yeah, look, my my first Dread Circus album, which is still on um, iTunes for mm. some reason, was done with a uh, Pentium Two uh, SM fifty eight, and and the last version of Pro Tools before it right. went off to uh, off to uh, Apple exclusively. And then um, I went on to, uh, to Logic, and I had the I still got the on my computer here on my laptop. I've still got the last version of Logic mm -hmm. before it went off to Apple as well. Oh wow! So yeah, five point five. I think it was. Right. And again, that album sounds shit. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> you leave it up on the store and just you know that's why I leave it up on the store so everything else that comes after it at least sounds better and you can see a progression. So. Yeah, this, you should never hide these things you should absolutely just quite often look back at these things and appreciate what they were I bet to you it sounds shit but I bet it's absolutely full of character which I think is uh, you sometimes lose that as you get more high tech kind of um, equipment and more plugins and all that kind of stuff I tend to f think quite often that having that kind of um, lack of Kind of technology and things actually means that you make you find ways to make more interesting music not yeah. necessarily better music but more interesting music in a lot of ways yeah for sure i, I totally agree with that and you know uh, the main reason too i leave that music up there is it, no matter what i think about the production i know when i wrote it when i was recording it i cried through a lot of the recording of that stuff so right. I, I still know if it had such a massive effect on me doing that, then it's going to have some kind of effect on somebody, even if it's yeah. one person. And that's, yeah. you know, that's that's how I make music. That's how I know a song's good if I cry through it and I can't sing it because I'm bawling my eyes out. It's doing <laughs> it to me. So, <laughs> Whatever works, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah. We all have our, our manic methods. So from GarageBand on Mac and... Um, predominantly keeping your wife because of her having a computer so was it, it i didn't say that you've just said that i didn't say that let me just right now that wasn't me that said that i implied it you said it if she's watching i'm quite sure she realizes that i do apologize i can hope so don't come after me <laughs> <laughs> I'm fragile. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so from GarageBand on Mac, how did you stumble across uh, GarageBand on iOS? Um, I kind of knew it was coming. So by that point, obviously, <clears throat> what was it? Twenty? Oh God, 
iPhone four when it, when Garage Band launched, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we had we were plugged in by that point. We had the internet. Yeah. I'd kind of I was up <laughs> on the kind of Garage Band and Apple News. Now I wasn't like a some little mad hermit sitting in a closed off cube with no <laughs> access to the outside world anymore. So obviously knew it was coming. I had an iPhone four. Um, and yeah, um, I think maybe day one or day two, I downloaded it. And it's, I mean, it was great. It was incredibly limited compared to what it is now. Um, oh, yeah. You don't, uh, if, you did, if you weren't there for it, I don't want to be exclusionary, but if you weren't there for it, you, you won't really have an idea of just how basic it was. I think you were limited to like eight tracks or something like that. Was there was no... Page. Absolutely. There was no inter-app audio. There was no AUV3. I think the only way that you could get programs to talk to each other was with Audiobus, I think. Um, and for a long time, Audiobus was king in terms of like linking up your apps and stuff like that. It yeah. um, wasn't until Apple made their own version with inter-app audio that um, I think a lot of people maybe... I, I say a lot of people, I stopped using that after that, um, even though inter-app audio was crap for a long time. And so... <laughs> And is now as well. Um, <laughs> and who knows when it's going to disappear? Well, yeah, I know. Depreciated until when? Come on, yeah. Tim Cook. Um, yeah, so, yeah, from the very start. And it was great to kind of work with. It was fantastic to kind of be able to, because the garage band was up and going by that point. So it was great to be able to kind of cover this new stuff because not a lot of people really were, to be honest. My traffic exploded when I started doing... Um, of kind of few and far between tutorials and covering GarageBand on iPhone because everybody had an iPhone. Even then, loads of people had an iPhone, um, but nobody was really covering GarageBand on on iPhone at all. So yeah, it was uh, it was it was good, and it's great to have, to see how much it has evolved since then because it is pretty pretty great nowadays. Yeah, I, th I think we get sometimes we get a bit lost in in our. I don't, myself, I'll speak for me only, in our bitchiness about garage bands saying, oh, but they don't <laughs> update it enough. There's not. It for, and I was an early adopter. You know, I, I actually had the first iPhone, which didn't even work in Australia. I purchased it. Oh, yeah, it, wow. And even knowing it just wouldn't even work, couldn't even connect it to a, a company here because it was AT&T only in the US. But I just ha wanted to have it to learn how to jailbreak it because that's what I was into. Right, okay. Then. And then... <laughs> Um, by the time the three three G came out, if it mm. wasn't for us jailbreakers, the app store wouldn't even exist because they basically stole all the ideas. Were you a jailbreaker <laughs> to be able to make music? Because I, I found I needed to jailbreak back before GarageBand came out, and when GarageBand came out, just to be able to rip files from the phone, bring them onto a computer, and then put them back in into the like to transfer them around the phone because I would have right. use the jailbreak to get into the file system to move things around. Right. We, did you um, dabble in jailbreaking? No, not at all. Not at all. Completely worked within the confines of the, the Apple kind of walled garden, the way that they ran their systems back then. Because, again, I mean, it was a lot more closed off then. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Apple definitely aren't the most open company when it comes to that kind of thing now. But back then it was even worse in terms of trying to access anything on your iPhone without going through iTunes randomly yeah. you know so yeah i can't I absolutely understand that you know you definitely had to do that in order to because especially were you using like a pc so did you not have an apple computer at that point was, was it like yeah. windows to your iphone i only got my first apple computer this last year my, oh, my of course M1 yeah Mac, of course which i love yeah, yeah of course i love it um i was like i'd use them from jobs i'd had mm. so i knew how to use them but um yeah I guess, uh, I, I, you know, I was never really a Mac fan until I got my first iPhone. Did you use any um, right. other music programs on iOS before GarageBand came out? Because there weren't many. No. No. And the ones that were there were, I don't think they were very good from what I remember. Well, I still use Music Studio. And that, that was, that's that been around for ages. And there's an there's oh, really? an Android version of that. There's iOS version. And... They even updated it just a few months ago. Man, it's I still stand by that app. It's still a killer app. Um, and that's that's why I jailbroke, because I would transfer GarageBand files over into Music Studio because of its superior MIDI that it had. 
Right, know? okay. And then then it bring the file back onto the computer and then put it back into GarageBand and then back onto the computer and then back into Music Studio. Man. <laughs> you know that, folks? You don't know your living. Yeah, you no, don't no. know what we went through. <laughs> People are like, no, do I have to use an interim <laughs> app like Audio Bus between? Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds like hell. Yeah, good on you for sticking at it. Well, you know, it's your passion. It's your music. Yeah. So you you do what yeah. you do what you can to get it done. Get it done. Yeah. Did good do. Don't even know what that was. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> I'll talk about your music, then we'll get into YouTube. So how did Wire Drawing come, come about? Because you've been making that music for um, quite a few years, yeah? Not really, to be honest. Like, it was um, when we, my wife and I moved to Aberdeen, which is in the northeast of Scotland, um, and we kind of moved jobs and stuff. I didn't have a job for a couple of months, and I eventually got a job, um, which I hated. It was dreadful. The commute was awful. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever been to Aberdeen, Jade. Um, but it's so far, oh. it's so far north. That in the summertime, it's only really dark for about three hours, and in the wintertime, it's only really light for about three hours. Right. Um, and it didn't do. I think it didn't really do a lot for either of our mental health, really, to be honest, when we were there. Um, but certainly, it was just. It was really a good escape from hating my job. Really, um, didn't like it. Pay was crap. Just kind of wanted to escape from it. Um, so. I kind of wrote everything on the EP maybe in like a couple of weeks or something, certainly kind of the outlines, um, and then recorded it in maybe a month and a half with um, that old iBook and a USB microphone. Um, it's all kind of, so the drums are all like loops. Um, the bass guitar is um, guitar recordings using the USB microphone in front of my amp and then just like transposing it down <laughs> so, so that it sounds like a bass um, yeah and then just kind of mixing it and putting it out it was great um, another really good part of our great community at that time was on SoundCloud back when SoundCloud was actually quite good and not like the soulless corporate nonsense that it is at the minute um, it had really good community features where you could be part of groups and you could submit your tracks to these groups and everybody would comment, listen to your tracks, give you feedback, and then you would do the same for the other people that would release in those groups. So there was a really good community element that meant that you wanted to create and finish these songs so that you could share it with the community that you were a part of and then obviously get from them other new music as well. Um, yeah, that all went a bit deep, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't think I'd be bearing my soul to you, but <laughs> it's a knack. I'm like, it like is an information drain. So that's so the one at the bottom there. So loose lips sink ships. That was what the, the track at the top of the show was from. It's that's the EP that was from 2011. That's uh, yeah, it was the kind of the first proper wire drawn release. Wire drawn. I don't even know where the name came from. I think I just was just made it up. Doesn't mean <laughs> anything. Sorry. Literally just needed a name, and that kind of it has two W's in it, which means that you notice it more in a list of words. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're the best names. So yeah, absolutely. So why? So um, this loose lips sink ships is the first one. Um, mm -hmm. This is the second, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is a, a single that has two extra tracks. Yes. Yeah. And then we move to, um, is it Secret Songs next? Uh, ooh, yes, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and this is a, has a whole bunch of demos on it as well. So, well, it has two. So, yeah, and then kind of remasters as well. So, I mean, a lot, a lot of the songs that are on there, apart from uh, the Full Circle, I hadn't mastered them at all. They, they were old projects that were just kind of mixed and then released the, and they were a bit quieter than other songs. Um, so they hadn't really been mastered. So I went back in and kind of did, did what I could with them because obviously a lot of them were recorded quite crudely years earlier um, and then kind of tried to master them to make them sound loud and decent and then kind of released it on, on that. I don't have any kind of massive following. I certainly don't have a massive following enough to release a B-Sides and Rarities <laughs> album. Um, but yeah, I didn't really know what else to call it. So it, 
it was called that. And was all this music made on Garage in Garage Band? Yes. Uh, on a particular Garage Band, like Mac or iOS, or is it a combination? All Mac. All Mac. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. Mm. So iOS users, he hates iOS. <laughs> I only cover it because I have to, because <laughs> it becomes so bloody popular. Yeah. It's a chore. <laughs> Um, no, no, no. So, uh, folks, before we do go on, so all the links are in the description to go out and um, listen to Patrick's music. If you haven't, go, do yourself a favor. Um, I'll be doing what I always do. Whoever I have on the show, I normally uh, leave their music playing on repeat for an entire 24 hours. And that's how I pay you for the show, all 19 cents of it. So. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> So, so in your distro kid, you're gonna get like, huh, three hundred streams? What's going on? You're like a Spotify agent or something. Is it just, yeah, we'll play for twenty four hours. Well, <laughs> I leave it on, like I listen to it. So, I, I, you know how I do it? I actually have it connected to my Spark amp, and I have it playing. So, uh, oh no, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I didn't know you you did that. That's amazing. Yeah, oh, it's not amazing, but yeah, you know, I, I just you don't have to do it. I'll tell you what, Pete Johns doesn't do it. <laughs> You maybe want to have a word with him. I know. Because uh, I've been on his show lots and he's never played any of my music. He's such a shady guy. <laughs> <laughs> Android, man. That's it. <laughs> he's a secret... A Not in his programming. secret agent for Android. Trust me, folks. You've heard it here. Um, <laughs> uh, he's tearing his hair out right now. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> um... Right, so no comment. I'm getting there myself, man. I'm not commenting on that. Oh look, I I, I had no hair for uh, a year. This is my real hair growing back. After I shaved, I had to cut it all off, and because I had chemo, uh, in, uh, not last year, the year before, and it's finally getting to this length. And in about two months' time, I'm going to turn it all into dreadlocks, so I never have to comb it again. <laughs> that's how lazy. Nice. That's how lazy I am. More time to make music. <laughs> You cut corners where you can, you know. I think I saw a question here from Bubba. Let me scroll up. Um, where is it, Bubba? Um, it was regarding question: Did either one of you ever use "Performer" by Mark of the Unicorn? I haven't. No, no. I, I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. But I'm not massively well informed, to be fair. So. Yeah, typical Bubba. Bubba's just there in the chat, just to throw curveballs at everybody <laughs> and just make us sit here and go, oh. "Good on you, <laughs> thanks, Bubba." <laughs> uh, Cold Acre, put <laughs> the phone in your pocket and ban him. Anyway, one of our mods here, Cold Acre, he works and he sticks his phone in his pocket while he's working, and he he bans people because his phone's in his pocket. Oh, <laughs> nice! Uh, uh, nothing out. but the best mods here on my <laughs> on your cold acre. Um, all right, so where are we? Um, all right, so the Garage Band Guide. Did it start out as mm. a website or a YouTube channel? Website. Website. For years, it was just a website. Yeah, yeah. Because the website's really, really deep. There's a lot to your website, and you know, I'm sh with all the content that is around on the internet these days, it's so hard to can be able to keep up with everything and consume everything. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there who st have watched your channel for the longest time and still aren't aware mm -hmm. there's a website. So it it could happen. I don't. Know. <laughs> maybe, 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 possibly. <laughs> Because have you always said at the beginning of your videos from the garagebandguide.com? No, I don't say that anymore either. All right. You've not been watching the videos, have you? No, I went through I went through I'm about kidding. 20 I'm kidding, of I'm them kidding. only last night yeah. just to see how your intro has changed. Cause well, maybe I do. Maybe I do. There's a recent one. Maybe I do say it. Maybe I do. Maybe I've not. I don't know what I'm, I'm talking stalking about. you. I'm <laughs> Actually, that looks familiar. Are you in my spare bedroom just now? That looks like. Yeah, that's me. No. Can you see me? I'm on your screen right now, always watching. I'm, I'm like ceiling cat, always watching. Yeah, that's, an, that's a really old meme, and nobody will have any idea of what it's about. Let me. Um. So, when did the Garage Band Guide website uh, begin? Do you remember what year? Yeah, I think I, I, think I bought the domain in like 
2010 or 2011 or something, had the first couple of um, posts up for a while. Um, the first the, the first video I ever put on YouTube coincides with the first post I ever put on the garagebandguide.com. It was a, the ultimate guide to using the GarageBand compressor. Um, but for the longest time, so I never really took YouTube seriously or started to really kind of focus on it as a part of my content strategy until about 2017. So before that, it was generally, I had a couple of videos that did well, but there was no kind of like plan behind that. It was just a place, it was a free video hosting site that I could easily embed videos from onto the website, yeah. as opposed to like an actual main consideration of the, the garage band guide itself. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until kind of 2017 when I actually started to think, actually, you know what? I'm getting quite a lot of subscribers. I'm getting quite a decent amount of views off of a couple of like hit videos. Maybe I should start looking at what actually I'm doing here and putting a bit more effort in. And that you do because like that's one of the things about your uh, videos. They're super, super polished. Um, come come across really well put together and um, and you have a delivery method that is the, the exact right scream at you in a scottish accent the exact right <laughs> amount of humor which yes. is really well, yeah. really hard to get you know i, I think um for myself I, I tend to identify with uh channels that um with presenters that actually do have some sense of humor and humility if you're able to convey that then I'm always super attracted and just like, we'll hit subscribe straight away. Like, you know, <laughs> if, 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 the minute I kind of see like a self, super self-help, like robot, how to make money kind of person, I'm like, get me the fuck out of yeah. here. This is Tony Robbins. I think it's really hard to resonate with people like that. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter how much like um, great information that you can convey to someone, unless you can also be in some small part entertaining, people aren't going to watch you. Yep. Um, or certainly, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for you, but certainly the way that I kind of watch YouTube, I do have a dreadful YouTube habit. Um, but I generally won't really find myself wanting to subscribe or watch more videos from someone who isn't kind of being informative and entertaining at the same time. I don't think. So generally, when I'm putting my videos together, I always try and kind of get a balance between the two as well. You want to try and kind of get as much information across, but try and make a few folks laugh as well i guess at the same time too 100 percent, because it seems to be this <laughs> I, I def, I'm, you know of course i'm not going to name names or anything like that but there does seem to be this uh, come on go on come on no i can't think of any of uh well uh, i'll tell you why i can't Pete again I, isn't it you're just I bullying him because i you're don't just bullying watch them now Jim. <laughs> this is why i can't <laughs> think of them because i turn off but there seems to be a, a trend of people who focus so much on the lighting behind them <laughs> And, and the aesthetics and the look of everything behind them. That yeah. By the time you start watching them, you're like, fuck, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. <laughs> this is it. I yeah. just can't connect, you know. Um, There's a lot of that now, yeah, where people focus so much on the technical as aspect of creating a YouTube video, thinking about the frame and the colour. I'll say that with colours behind me. But, um, yeah, and the actual substance and content of the video just falls by the wayside and we're interested in looking good than actually giving people value i think so when you started out like clearly you know you've got um uh, guides you know and your free guides are absolutely so beautifully put together so folks oh, thank you just say if you haven't if you know you haven't downloaded the guides even if you think you know everything about garage band Go over to the garagebandguide.com and download these guides because I'm telling you, there's going to be five things you're going to go, oh, I had no idea about that. <laughs> so um, clearly you, you've got a following through the website. Uh, did you mm, think yeah. that the uh, the YouTube channel would take off like it, like it did and has and continues uh, it, to? It hasn't. I mean, I, I had 85,000 subscribers yesterday, which seems absolute insanity but when you look at something like that me saying that you don't really you just see the eighty five thousand subscribers you don't see the months and years yeah. behind that like you don't just suddenly 
get unless you have some kind of mad viral video or depending on what kind of niche you're on, I guess, you don't really just get that amount of subscribers overnight. There's work gone into that. I'm not trying to talk myself up here, but there's hard work gone into that. And there's also time gone into that. Yep. I, I think a, a lot of people just uh, see quite a lot of people. And I have seen a lot of people kind of start YouTube channels or start websites or both and put everything they have into it for like a year. And then they've got like a thousand subscribers or less and they just give up because they think that it's, it's not working for them. Whereas you just need to keep putting one foot in front of the other, constantly work on kind of finding your voice and refining the way that you are presenting the information or whatever it is that you're presenting. Um, and yeah, you, you will eventually get to a point where you are going to resonate with people. You are going to get a ton more subscribers than you're probably getting now, but you need to keep at it and you need to keep not doing the same thing over and over and over again if it isn't working for you. Um, I've kind of fallen off foul, foul of that a couple of times in the kind of the formation and the way this kind of channel's gone. Um, but yeah, uh, it's hard what do you work. reckon? It's hard do work. Do you think, yeah. And and I've only been doing it for a really short amount of time. Um, and I agree, consistency, like I, I'm lucky I've, I've had people like you and Pete Johns and people like uh, mm. uh, Dan Baker, people like Doug, uh, who I've watched for years and years, don't really know anything about metrics and all that kind of stuff like that. Yeah. But understand why, like when I went into it, the main thing I thought of first was, why do I like these channels? It's like I said before, I like these people. Like I want to listen to them. Like uh, even yeah. if like it's an app that or uh, like uh, back in the day, I didn't wasn't into synth music or anything like that. Mm. But it yeah. made me want to just click on it because I want to see what you're doing and catch up with you and and. You know, it's, it, you you want to um, I guess have a like a friend a friend on the screen you go hello what are you doing today what am I talking about is that what you say to YouTube videos do yeah, you expect them to talk back to you over on my bed there with my little phone going hello hello how are you yeah I'm I'm mildly going insane <laughs> but but look it, and it's it's consistency and just plowing through and and you know judge trying to to me it's just like trying to make content not for me but for the people who are watching and it's about them not me at the same time you've got to like the content that you're making and like for what sure. you're talking about because if you don't then you will burn out or you will lose interest it doesn't matter how many views you're getting how, mu how much money you're making essentially if you don't like what you're doing and you're not passionate about it to at least to some extent then yeah you're just going to stop doing it it's yeah. not going to work for you for sure and that that's how you start your channel though you you've finite come down to that little point of of exactly what you want to do and make sure it's the thing that you like doing the thing that makes you happy absolutely and you're guaranteed to continue to want to do it each day i, I say it all the time i have this little um, post-it note up in the corner of my TV that just says, remember why you're doing this to get out of bed each day. And that's how I started the channel because I was not well and constantly laying mm -hmm. in bed and going, trying to help people in the GarageBand User's Guide. Mm -hmm. in the, or GarageBand User's Guide. In the GarageBand User's <laughs> Group on Facebook. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then thought, I can't be bothered typing anymore. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. talk this shit. <laughs> it's, it's a lot yeah. easier. Um, so what are your plans? What, what do you see in the year ahead for the garage band guide? It depends. It depends. So at the minute I'm like everybody else in the UK, I've got a bit of free time on my hands mm. till about March. Um, obviously depending on what happens after that. Um, who knows? Um, but certainly there's not any kind of massive projects months ahead in the future that I'm kind of, I can't talk about or anything. You'll know yourself when it comes to covering apps and speaking to developers, these things tend to come up quite quickly. You'll get like a week's notice. So oh, yeah, I better make a bloody video about that. Jesus. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's just going to be again, just more of putting one foot in front of the other, trying to be maybe more productive than I have been 
quite a flaky guy, Jade. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I went, like I say, when I said I wish I had Pete John's work ethic, I wasn't kidding. Um, but yeah, certainly try and focus a bit more on this. I mean, this whole thing about being stuck at home multiple times over the last 12 months has really kind of brought into focus exactly what it is that I want to do. Um, I still have a full-time job. I have a, like a real-world job that I work 40 hours a week. and then, So this technically is kind of my side thing at the minute. Yeah. Kind of. Um, and yeah, so it's putting things in place and looking at options that I can do to turn this into the full-time job as opposed to just the side thing, you know. Um, I would say probably out of anything that's the main focus this year yeah so it seems like it's, it's we've kind of alluded to it because it's pretty hard to ignore what's gone on in the last year with the magic c word and yeah, yeah. um you know i'm sure everybody in the chat's probably going to start pumping emojis of carrots in there but that's not what i'm talking <laughs> about um, and i'm not talking about the actual c word which carrots was meant to replace by pete johns but the the pandemic so how, how has that impacted you um, as a creator? I mean, you know, you said you got a, a, a day job, lockdown. Mm. Uh, what about your mental health? How, how have you got through all this? Because uh, it's it's something that everybody's str been struggling with. I think one thing I've seen speaking to a lot of other creators as well is that it's I'm quite thankful that I have this. So you can absolutely pour yourself into kind of content creation into planning like a week ahead in terms of what your 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 creation schedule is going to be what your recording schedule is going to be stuff like that it gives you a bit more structure um whereas obviously if you're stuck at home for months you're not really usually going to have a lot of structure really um certainly i've seen a lot of people a lot of people in the garage band users group as well who are kind of not using music in the same way but certainly pouring themselves into that and using i don't want to call it an opportunity because that is probably like too positive a spin to put on the whole situation if you know what i mean yeah, but it's hard isn't it using yeah i know i know um but using that opportunity then to kind of focus on more creative sides of things um and i would say i've certainly done the same when it's come to kind of videos and interacting with people online and certainly like YouTube consumption as well. I've got, I'm a really bad, bad for falling down YouTube black holes. Um, but kind of more so certainly in the last six months, there's been kind of more channels in this kind of whole music making community that have kind of helped get me through as well. You can regularly watch these people. And as much as I was pissing myself at you saying it, it is, al it is almost like that familiarity of kind of connecting with someone regularly um, whether it's weekly or daily or whatever, um, that gives you a bit of stability as well. So kind of, yeah, that was a bit of a tangent, wasn't it? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have you felt the urge to write a lockdown song? No. Same here, man. No. There's too many. I, 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 the market was flooded. <laughs> nothing against anybody who Same. has, but it just seems a bit... Yeah, no, you're all right. I'll, I'll write a song, but not a lockdown song. That's a bit cheesy. Yeah. Well, no offence. Uh, look, I feel guilty talking about it too. I, I agree that there's been opportunities through the... Mm. Um, and it's... Look, I think um, in times like this, there are opportunities for creativity and and other avenues to come out. And and look, I'm not. I'm trying not to take away from anybody who's been struggling, who's been hit from their... their work yeah. unfortunately you know one of the main countries that's hit the worst is america because of the the system and stuff there with you know health or anything i'm not getting political or anything but we're lucky enough to we promised in... jade we promised I know, I know. come on but we are lucky enough <laughs> in in uh, many countries in europe and in australia new zealand and such to have governments that actually like kind of sort of looked after us and 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 paid out some people with jobs and so there, mm. there have been people who've not all, of course, but so that side of creativity and opportunity to express yourself in a different way has probably been a good thing for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's get to some apps. Okay, go on, yeah. All right, so wow. let me... I, I prepared so much for this, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> of course you did. You prepared... <laughs> 
just as much as I prepared <laughs> questions for the show. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, folks. The amount of effort we put into this interview show is absolutely F all. So lap it up. Um, let me just open. <laughs> so throw at me some apps one at a time, and then I'll search for it. And while I'm searching for it to bring it up on the screen, tell me why. So five to ten, up to ten, however many you want, up to ten. Why these right. apps make you happy. Well, as you know, I swing both ways when it comes to GarageBand. So I've picked three GarageBand on Mac plugins and three GarageBand on iOS apps cool. that I use. Does that sound all right? Can we start on the iOS? Mm, no. Yeah, of course. Only um, <laughs> because I had the screen up. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first one is uh, Alpha from Bliss. Yes. Um, absolutely one of my favorite synth apps of last year was my favorite app of last year actually um really special to me because until kind of the start of last year i wasn't a synth guy i had no idea what i was doing with all these knobs and <laughs> knobs different like oscillators and stuff like that i had no idea um but uh Vianney, uh Blease reached out and asked if I wanted to help beta test the app, which I was like, ah, why not? Give it a try. Like, absolutely loved it. They really got the balance right in terms of depth of control and making it easy for like dum dums like me to actually <laughs> shape sounds in it. Um, liked it so much. Uh, let them know how much I liked it. They said, do you want to create like a, a bank of five or six presets for the launch, which I did amongst other people as well. Um, and then later on down the line, they reached out and said if I wanted to create like an actual like DLC bunch of presets for the app as well, which I absolutely jumped at the chance. So it's like one of the few synth apps that I know inside out. Um, yeah, fantastic. Love it. I would urge anybody to uh, to give it a whirl for sure. Yeah, it's a fantastic app. Um, mm. And I think what's really cool too about your pack on there because you you have some pretty unique sounds on there as well i really like your yes pack yeah, yeah. because you kind of yeah. buck the system and i like stuff that bucks the system so supposed to be quite gritty and dirty sounding and quite yeah it's good yeah drag, great fun making it drag it through the dirt three times rough mm. it up a bit more take it to bed give it a wash over <laughs> so start again the next day that's how i like it um I... <laughs> good to know <laughs> that's why i'm single <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's really cool about your pack too is you donated all the money to charity, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we're still continuing. We are continuing to, yeah. Uh, Vianna got in touch to say that um, it's looking like we're going to be able to kind of donate about $500 a piece at the minute to our selected charities. So, who, who um, was, who, yeah, who, just... who were the charities? Uh, oh, see, so you now you put me on the spot now. Who are they? See, I should have done my research, really, as a good it's... interviewer. Music airs in the US. Um, I know that Bleece are planning to donate to some European um, COVID charities as well. Uh, cool. do, 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 do. So yeah, um, I told you I'll, I'll make you work I'll for tell it. You. Yeah, totally. Uh, where am I? Do, 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 do. Play me out, Johnny. Uh, where we... and the, oh, while you're doing that, packs are really cheap too. So um, your one's really Yeah, yeah, they're not. Not expensive. So my one's really cheap. Yeah, yeah, thanks, say, but, your um, one's really yeah. cheap. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like uh, I was heading there, but it wasn't. So, so they're be uh, yeah between two ninety nine and five ninety nine. So for the packs. And, yes. And so it's going to helpmusicians dot org in the UK, uh, Music Cares in America, and they had uh, it's Emaho, Emaho, Emaho. That's who they're donating it to anyway. Right. If that's at all helpful for you. Cool. Well, you know, good on you guys for doing that because, you know, and, and Bleece make fantastic apps. There's no doubt about that. I, yes. I've looked at so yeah, many yeah. of their apps on the show and uh, they just, and I'm sure this year as well, they're going to make even more fantastic apps. Mm. They continue to... Uh, Possibly not just for iOS, dude. Ooh. Ooh. But I didn't tell you that. Well, you know, just speaking on that quickly, I did a, a review of that um, Bass Deluxe amp. Yes. And I was pleasantly surprised when i i, I looked at the in-app i looked for in-app uh, just to see no before, <laughs> so before i did the show i wanted to check if it was on uh, ipad only or iphone and when i clicked the little button on the app store it just said 
available for iPad and Mac and was like, hang on, this is the first. I haven't actually seen this before. And then I jumped on my new M1 Mac, which I love. And there it was <laughs> in the app store, not as an iPhone or iPad app, but it was the same yeah. app. So so all the like negativity, which we saw people go, oh, but now that it's out, it wasn't what Apple said. It's coming. <laughs> it, it, we are going to get yeah. there. So, but and I think, I don't know, what are your thoughts on this? I think because of that, once we start seeing this kind of thing happen, I think the price of um, apps on Mac are going to start dropping. Not by a or lot. Or do you not think? Do you not think that maybe apps on iOS should increase slightly, and they should meet in the middle somewhere? Maybe I don't because I think that some of the the prices of these iOS apps are really quite small, and I think it's more to do with the market, yep. as opposed to like the developers actually only want three quid for their app, you know? For sure. I, I, I don't think anything is the right way, but it, I do think it's going to come yeah. more to a middle ground. And, you know, if it wasn't for yeah. things like Candy Crush and shit like that, we wouldn't have had the race to the bottom where everything went free yeah, yeah. and all totally. that stuff. I mean, how many... Totally. Uh, th this, anybody who plays games on iOS will be well aware that you've had a, you bought a game and it's happened with music apps as well. You spent 20 bucks yeah, yeah. on it. And then a year later, they decide, oh, we're just going to go freemium. And like, you're like, hang on, I paid 20 bucks for that. What happened? And and now yeah. I, I'm a, what? Hopefully we can get out <coughs> Amplitude. <of that. coughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't hear that either. <laughs> um, anyway, we got off on the tangent there. So what other apps do you have going? <laughs> Uh, do you want another iOS or do you want a Mac app? I will do all the iOS so then I can right, jump okay. over to a different screen to look up the Mac ones because I don't think I all can right. look them up on the iPad iOS store. Cool. So an oldie but a goodie. I think probably still one of their best apps if only they make it AUV3 is Synth1. Yes. From AudioKit. Um, genuinely like an app so good that Apple stuck it on all the iPads in all the Apple stores in America crazy um genuinely like still blown away by some of the sounds you can create with it sounds fantastic that's free why is it free why jade why i don't know um because we're lucky i think so yeah totally um yeah this is great if, if you have an ios device and you don't have this you should probably get this it's great um the only downside as mentioned is that it is inter app audio only um I think they've, they've been saying that they're going to add AUV3 for a long time. I think it's probably more likely at this point they'll just release like a sequel. I think because it's quite old code it's built on. I think yeah, it's open source. Um, not that I don't, have a, I don't have a massive understanding of this thing, um, but yeah, um, it's great. You should definitely um, even if you just want to use it in standalone to piss about with it, it's great. Yeah, and, and that's the thing with AudioKit. Um, they're completely open source software and there's so many other apps that have offshot from yeah. their their code that are AUV3. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. the weird thing. Like people are using their code to make other apps and then they're AUV3, but the, the And stable as well. Yeah, the and the original code isn't. Look, you know, interapp audio, it, it gets a bad rap, doesn't it? But it's because it's crap. It, <laughs> but I, I, there's been times where it still kind of works enough to be able to be able to get yeah. through and record something and you know from from what we were talking about earlier about having garage band back in the day on ios where it was mm, crap yeah sometimes it's good to fight through those crappy moments and still get something done with something that is a bit shit which um kind of i, I did that for ages I, f I feel a bit lucky these days with all the apps that we have Doing a show on yeah, them every day, yeah, yeah. like I got, I got a, a, an app yesterday called um, a Voice Synth, and right. I was playing with that for four hours last night, just doing this into the mic. <laughs> Hello there, I am a computer. <laughs> and I looked at the clock; it's like four hours of me going, "Hello, I am a computer." Consummate professional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seeing behind the curtain, folks, I'm mental. I am crazy. <laughs> Um, anything else? Oh, so your third app from iOS that you uh, recommend? Yeah, uh, oh yeah, like a fantastic guitar sound. Nimbrini Monster Tube eighty one eighty, such 
a good kind of dirty hardcore heavy rock metal guitar sound i don't think there's anything better i think the thing with embrini they've absolutely smashed it like last year bringing out a lot of these um that were desktop only amp sims to ios they did a fantastic job of making them sound great and it's really kind of made a lot of other kind of larger amp sims look a bit sheepish maybe so it kind of blows i think this blows anything that you can create on bias amp or bias effects out of the water i think in terms of like an actual hardcore heavy sound yeah, look, I, you've used it before, right? Yeah, I did a you show know, right? on this. Uh, I think it's yeah. absolutely killer. It's it's so simple mm. to use. So, um, it's all in in one screen. You know, it's not yeah. complex. Um, and yeah, you can get an absolutely monster sound. On my Methiest album, I used um, Bias FX two for one of the guitars, and I used right. this for the second guitar. So, you know, and I look at it. I paid what one hundred nine dollars to unlock Bias FX. <laughs> Kill me now! Yeah, totally. Um, and this was, uh, I can't even remember how much it is, but it's like a, a piss in the ocean compared to something like yeah. Bias FX. 20 quid, I think, or something. Yeah, it's yeah. not much, but it's great. Yeah, absolutely. If you're on a heavy guitar riffs and stuff, yeah, get it. It's great. Definitely. Absolutely. Agree 100%. Um, all right, so how am I going to look up these Mac apps? Can I look up? I think I can look up Mac apps. You can just on the. You can just look on their website yeah, if you want. Like, I can just. I, mean, it's up to you. I can just. Do Google search. So the first one is Valhalla Supermassive from Valhalla DSP. Supermassive. I think I spelled it right. Yeah. Um, I can just go to their website, can't I? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Cool. Do, 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 do. Why is this? It's awesome? free. Which it is free. It's great. Uh, so which one is it? Supermassive. Super massive, so keep scrolling down. Keep oh, scrolling down. Remember, there's a, there's a lady. After the Muse song. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it's great, like an echo reverb effect, but it is, it's unlike anything you've used before, it is just spectacular. There is no reason whatsoever why this should be free. Like, this just this shouldn't be free. I would happily give them money for it. It's great. Um, yeah, if you're on Mac get it I, but you'll have to resist the urge to use it on every single track because it is that good well i had no idea of its existence and just saved it as a favorite oh, really? so i'll be downloading it straight oh, away oh oh it's so good so good really in depth you've got loads of like it's got um different i can't think of the words and i could just read it off the screen it's got different modes and presets and you can mix and match and then mess about with the controls but you can get like massively different sounds from it um, very, very deep, very worth diving into. Um, yeah, I'd set aside, if you spent four hours talking into a microphone saying, I am a robot, I'd set aside about a day to mess about with this. <laughs> well, we've already done. <laughs> Tell people how lost I get in silly little apps. Man, it, look, it looks really <laughs> nice and simple to use too. Yeah, nice, this is it. Yeah, yeah. Nice and plain. The running theme with the uh, apps and plugins that I like. Told you I'm a dum dum. <laughs> yeah. Pretty colors and big controls suits me. Oh, look, I'm a sucker for both. I like the simple ones, the simple looking ones, and I definitely like the the complex ones with the the UI with broken leads and all that. Too. I like the extreme of the skeuomorphic stuff, yeah. but then I like the, the yeah, gentle yeah. stuff too. So, so if you don't have that, folks, get it, get it. Um, all right, what are we jumping to next? Uh, Clevgrind Star. Uh, you would have you must yeah, know this one yeah you, you'll know this it was one of my favorite plugins and apps of 2019 um yeah my go-to guitar um sim probably like 90 percent of the time just sounds really good i wish they would update it more often because clevergrind are dreadful at updating their apps sure on a are. frequent basis um which is quite uh disappointing because otherwise they're a really are really good at making good sounding apps and plugins but this is great you get a lot of control and um, it's simple enough that you are possibly quite constricted you could only load four different pedals on at a time um but the different sounds and reverb options and stuff that's built into the plugin i think sound great um and you could do a lot worse i certainly think it's a lot better than something like um 
again, I don't want to mean to bash on them, but by, <laughs> bias effects um, or bias amp, certainly on Mac, because again, they cost an absolute fortune on Mac as well. Yeah. I mean, this isn't cheap, to be fair. Um, I probably, I wouldn't recommend buying this at full price, but Clevergren quite often have sales on where you'll get that at half off, if not a bit cheaper. So yeah. They're really good with their price drops, terrible with their yeah. updates. So. Yes, yeah, disappointing. And it's, and it's on iPad too, so for 20, yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's exactly the same plug in and app, um, but with a massive price difference. Again, just because it's different markets, it's quite frustrating when you use both platforms. It's quite frustrating. Yep. I, I can I can see, I th think what you said earlier is, is probably where we're going to head. I can see all these apps. So looking at something like this, I can see them heading to more of a 30, 39 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Both I think that's fair. I think that's a bad thing, really. Yeah. It's a lot of kind of smaller developers, I think, would welcome it. I know a lot of smaller de developers are getting a, a cut on how much they have to give Apple, but still um, being able to increase their prices without getting much pushback would be good for them as well, I think. Look, and I think it'll make people a bit more careful about what they buy too and yes. actually buy things yeah. that they will use instead yes. of... When you look at my iPad, there's, you know, 12 pages of apps because I'm just too lazy to put them in folders. <laughs> and clearly, I don't use them all, but I do it because I've got a show. So, you know, that I talk yeah. about apps. Um, but I always forget to delete them. So that's my problem there. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Look, this is a cool app. I haven't used it that much. I've never actually used it on a recording. Um, I've found, look, and it depends on the same... Uh, Look, I'll, I'll just throw my two cents in on this app. It depends on the um, heavy kind of sound you're getting because I write a lot of yeah. death metal and I found mm -hmm. it actually quite hard to get the really brutal yeah. degent sound that I want yeah, from yeah. that yeah, particular yeah. app. Really good for hard rock, really good for, you know, typical thrash, that kind of stuff or, you know, any any other kind of stuff with like no distortion. It's great for that. Yeah. But for degent, eh, didn't work no. for me. No, but, fair enough. That's a, a fair point, yeah. Well, that's where bias comes in. I, I only use bias for Degent because it seems right. like a lot of people upload to the Tone Cloud a lot of Degent. And I hate that word, Degent. But, um, so, all right. What's your third and final? Um, might be a controversial pick because it's not kind of any kind of small developer, but it's an app, an app a plugin I use on most of my programs when they're finished. Um, and it's Isotope's Ozone Mastering Software. Just, uh, I've spelled it right, haven't I? I've used it for years. Um, I used to, I, I can't believe I'm, I'm admitting this on camera, but I used a <clears throat> pirated copy for a couple of years <laughs> back in 2011 um, from ye old Pirate Bay. I have bought the full <laughs> thing since <laughs> to kind of try and... <laughs> Wait, what's it called? What's the name of it? Uh, Ozone. Oh, yeah, O-Z-O-N-E. Yeah. Um, there we go. But yeah, it's uh, like a great mastering suite. You can go as simple or as technical as you want, and they have three different kind of onboarding prices, so you can get the elements, which gives you access to presets, their um, master assistant, which will listen to the the track you've got it on and then kind of create a custom preset almost. Um, and then you've got kind of like the standard version and then the advanced version, which is stupid expensive. Um, an interesting thing about this, and uh, not to plug myself, but I'll be talking about this in a future plugins slash Apple Silicon video, is on my old Mac and a lot of people's um, current Intel Macs in GarageBand, Ozone and Isotope's other plugins don't work properly. Right. So a lot of the new plugins have got like a master assistant or they're mixing one. Neutron has got a track assistant where it will kind of, you let it listen to the track and it will create a preset for you. You'd go through that process. You'd go to hit accept to kind of lock in that preset on your track and it would just crash GarageBand completely. Um, and you'd get a big error message and stuff. Um, so it kind of severely limited the use of it in GarageBand. On Certainly on my M1 Mac Mini, those features work right. now. 
um, which is really strange because they haven't been updated to Apple yet. They're still running through the translation component in GarageBand, so it's still the Intel version, but um, all these assistant features still work. Mate, what's it? Um, yeah, so that's even what's better. What's called? The, the, I just can't think of it. The um, system that trans, transposes everything. Rosetta yeah. 2. Maybe it's Rosetta that. 2. Look at, a lot, so many people poo-pooed that thing saying, yeah, you know. Mm, it's yeah, great. I haven't seen it do anything crappy once. C genuinely amazed at how well it does work. Uh, the, everything with this, apart from a couple of little niggling issues, I'm genuinely quite impressed at how much Apple didn't mess this up. It's very un-Apple of Well, you know... <laughs> really very un-Apple of I think Pete says this quite a, a bit too. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of YouTube creators who have talked about the M1 Mac, a bit disingenuous when they say, this is Apple's first chip. When they've been doing this mm, shit yeah, for yeah. a long, long time with iOS, so it, there's True. a lot of experience behind it. So it, it, you know, it wasn't like their first walk in the park, um, and that's why I mm, think yeah. they smashed it out of the park compared to back in the day when they transferred um, to Intel and and they had the first Rosetta, which was a nightmare. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreadful. They've, they've really nailed it this time. I mean, you know. Uh, I watch um, Linus Tech Tips, and he was he yeah, was yeah. one of the ones very vocal this time, going, "This is gonna suck," you know. And I, I really loved watching his videos the last yeah. month, going, "Oh, I was yeah. wrong." Because <laughs> he got a lot of heat for that. It was quite funny. His comment sections were hilarious. Well, he, he's had <laughs> a lot good. of beef with Apple for a long time, and for good reason yeah, yeah. for a lot of it. You know, a lot of stuff that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's good to see that Apple. Maybe they're listening to us. Maybe they are listening. Yes. That's, that's Finally. promising. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Maybe this is the year that they actually give a shit about those Apple forums. <laughs> mm, yeah. I'm going to yeah, go those, that. A, those Apple <laughs> forums, how many posts are there that people just going, help me, I don't know how to fix this, and there's just no answer. It's just, whoosh, yeah. just a ghost town. All right. Well, thank you for yeah, sharing your, your apps. Sucks. We're at the end, we're at the end of the show. I'm going to ask the final question, and then we are going to get out of here with another one of your tracks. Oh, there's another one. What's that? I said there's another one, another question. There's only one more. It's the one I ask everyone. <laughs> Patrick Bear, when is the best time mm -hmm. for somebody to start creating? Right now. <laughs> this second. Do it. Right now. Turn, turn this video off. <laughs> Go yes, and start creating. Stop watching us dickheads. <laughs> oh no, listen to my song. Yeah. And then, then go and Hey, that's good to see you are following through on this year. Uh, your resolution, well not resolution. You're going to start putting more effort, or not effort, but more. Listen to my music kind of thing. Thanks. So, so that's it, folks. So <laughs> make sure you hang around to listen to another one of Patrick's songs. Thank you very much for coming on the show um sorry it's taken so long to get you on thank you. here um folks not at all listen this was great fun thank you so much for having me looking forward to the yeah. next time well um so I, i've mentioned that this week i'm going to start like a, a a new series so anybody who's come on the show previously to be interviewed we're going to do these uh, behind the song shows so when a previously interviewed person releases a song we're going to have them back on and get you to send me the project file and we'll open the project up file up for a half an hour show and show how you ran mm -hmm. through and made the song. So that's something. And I think we're going to start Better, uh, put my thumb up my arse and start making a song. That's it. So I'm putting the pressure on, tightening <laughs> the grip right now. Um, let me just uh, get this song queued up. Be really unprofessional here. What do we agree on? Oh, we agreed on this one. So make sure it's all queued up. So professional, me. Um, <laughs> but I don't have the right lighting behind me, so uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that pro. Uh, yeah. Folks, all of <laughs> all of Patrick's details are in the description, so go over there. Click, 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 click. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Do all that stuff. Download his music. Listen to it. Love it. Dance to it. Make love to it. Do whatever you want to it bloody get into it and um thank you all <laughs> thank you all for being here today i'll ask you to hang on before uh 
while I play at your track, just so I can say goodbye to you offline. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, folks, I'm going to play right now. So this is Loose Lips Sink Ships. That's what I'm playing now, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is <laughs> Good Loose <effort. laughs> Lips Sink Ships, and um, it's not about porno. Um, <laughs> where am I going? It's... <laughs> I think I need some alcohol or something like that. So <laughs> thank you everybody for hanging out. Enjoy the music. Have a great day. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff if you really want to. Thank you for those who sent a super chat. I think Metalhead Hippie sent one and I missed that because I just saw that pop up now. And uh, have a great day. And we will see you whoops, again real soon. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye. Guess I feel alright Suppose I should have learned by now How to make the time go I guess I'm really alright Cause nothing's really changed around here Except the way the time goes
For those of you still here, I just forgot I had to run a competition. And there are the winners of the competition for the Base Amp Deluxe, Nina and Payan to get have won. You'll receive a notification on the actual video. Thanks a lot, everybody, for hanging out. Um, congratulations to the winners of those apps. You'll hear from me very, very soon. Thank you, Patrick. And remember, head over to Joey's channel, Joey Helpish's channel for the next, uh, I think he's uh, on there now. And then in about 11 minutes time, Pete Johns is interviewing Thomas Christ. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. And we'll see you again. Bye-bye.